In this video, I want to make a dialogue box for a non-playing character. He's right over here. I'm right here. And when you interact, you can get an item from the non-playing character. Let's go over to our dialogue box. We're going to click on it. And then he's going to ask me a question. Oh, do you want a lemon? And then I can answer over here. Yes. Rah, I got a lemon. There we go. So I can go ahead and get it out of my backpack. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and get started with that. I thought that'd be pretty cool. I have an empty base plate here. There's nothing in my game. I'm going to add an NPC. I think I'm just going to use a rig. So I'm on this home tab. Go over to avatar, this avatar tab. Click that. And then we're going to go to rig builder. Click that. And you can do R15 or R6. It's going to work either way in this video. And I'm going to do mesh avatar 2016. I like that. Cool. You can play around with different ones. And now we have our little rig. Let's rename our rig. In case we have a lot of NPCs. Let's call him Lemon Vendor. Sweet. Now in the Explorer window over here, I am going to hit the arrow on the Lemon Vendor, open up the things inside the Lemon Vendor. I'm going to look for the head. I'm going to hit the plus sign on the head. And then I'm going to do Dialog. Sweet. All right, there's my Dialog. We're going to add two choices. You can add more. But I hit that dialogue plus right here. And then if you don't see dialogue choice and frequently use, which you probably won't, go ahead and do a DIAL or something like that. Minimize your subset. You got one dialogue choice. Do it again. Two dialogue choices. Cool. When you have your little NPC with his little question mark up there, he's going to have something called an initial prompt. So look at the dialogue. Go down here. Ah, initial prompt. Do you want a lemon? Oh, the question mark. Sweet. Now, we're going to have two choices down here. Well, there's going to be two choices plus a goodbye choice by default. All right. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm going to hit this first choice. And let's go ahead and put like a yes. I'm going to put the yes on top. Notice that the dialogue choice is here because sometimes ordering is a little funny in Roblox. And it's, and it's a little bit tricky to get them ordered right. Let's go to dialogue uh, response dialogue. What is that one? That is what the NPC will say when you answer. If I go down here to user dialogue, ah, these are the player choices, right? What the player can say. So under user dialogue, Let's do yes. And then for the response, we'll say, I have a lemon here or something like that. How about, I have one here, exclamation. Let's go down here to the next one. Dialogue choice, user dialogue, what the user can say. Maybe we'll say no, like you don't want a lemon. Right, and then what's the response to that? How about what the NPC says back, right? Fine, fine, dot, dot, dot. I see how it is. There we go, exclamation. That's a little bit rough. All right, let's try this out. Then we'll do some renaming in here, just for the choices. Hit the plus. There's our guy, right? Lemon vendor. Hit the plus. Do you want a lemon? Ah, uh, yes. And then he's going to have, I have one here. Now, let's see how his lemon vendor name gets in the way of the dialogue choices. Let's get rid of that real quick. Turn the game off. And then on my lemon vendor humanoid, look for display distance type. It says viewer. Hit that. I'm going to say none. Cool. All right, and then when we go ahead and play it, now it shouldn't say anything, right? It doesn't say le uh, lemon vendor, and now we just have dialogue. Do you want a lemon? How about no? Fine. I see how it is. Cool. Let's go ahead and turn this off, and we will continue onward. Let's get a lemon now so that we can hand out the lemon when the person asks for it. I'm going to go to the Home tab, and then toolbox and we are in the creator store you want to select mesh parts right we're just gonna get a simple mesh part and then make we're gonna make it a tool you can make it a tool or accessory but tool is what's gonna work with this video because I'm just gonna put it right in their backpack so let's go ahead and get lemon 
And I'll get this uncolored one right here. It's going to be huge because they brought it in from like Blender or something like that. Maybe Tinkercad, probably Blender. Let's go ahead and close that. Take a look at our lemon. We're going to have to make this smaller, right? So under model, for studs, I have it down to like 0.1 studs so that when I go ahead and scale it, it'll snap to that 0.1. You could do whatever you want. When I hit the shift and then one of these buttons, I'm going to see a little list down on the lower right, and it's going to give me some options. I want to scale uniformly, and I see alt and then the drag is gonna scale uniformly. So I'm gonna hit my Alt button, hit this green thing, and then I'm gonna start dragging this down. I don't know how big I should make it. I think I'm gonna make it like 0.6 studs on the thickness, that's it. 0.597, that should work. Let's see how big that is. I'm gonna drag that into my rig to see what it looks like after I make a tool let's we can compare it yeah that that looks about lemon size compared to our guy maybe a little big we might need to make it smaller well let's make this into a tool for now i'm going to go to the rig which is a lemon vendor i'm going to shrink this down just so that I have more uh it's easier to find my mesh in the workspace i'm going to hit the plus i'm going to do t for tool there we go i'm going to add the tool the tool is going to be called lemon, All right? And then the mesh part, I'm going to drag inside the lemon tool. I think I'll recolor it. Sometimes when you bring mesh parts in, you can't recolor them, but this one you can. Typically, if they're gray, you can. Look at that. Made it yellow, like a lemon. And this is going to be handle. Now, since it's a tool, we don't have to add the attachment. If we drag it into our lemon vendor, we can see about what it's gonna look like in his hand. So the size isn't too bad, but we gotta change the position of the lemon, right? So let's do this. Um, on the lemon itself, select the lemon, not the handle, but the lemon. I'm gonna look for grip, and then I'm gonna change the orientation first. Grip orientation. Let's try and make that on the middle number, the Y, Will it be the Y? I think it's the X. See, I'm looking right here. This is the X. Let's make this 90 degrees, see what happens. So if I do 90 degrees, oh, that's pretty good, right? So change those numbers. Uh, it's on degrees, not radians. That's looking nice. I'm gonna move the lemon this way a little bit. So grip position, let's try Z. What if I do 0.2? Wrong way. Let's make it negative 0.2. So I'm going to put a negative sign for that 0.2. That's not bad. All right. And if you go to change those numbers and it doesn't work, what you should do, Roblox sometimes updates funny. Take it back out to the workspace, slide it back into the rig, and then it'll update. Mine updated right there, so I didn't have to do that. But Roblox is a little bit glitchy when you're actually doing the grip position um, and the rig's holding it, right? Sometimes you have to you have to move it outside of the workspace. Or I should say move it outside of the of the rig into the workspace. All right, now we don't need this guy to hold the lemon, right? So I'm going to grab this lemon and I'm going to drag it down. I think I'm going to put it in replicated storage. You could also put it in server storage, but the code that I'm writing today is going to be relying on replicated storage. So we're going to, we're going to pass those to the player. Right? We'll clone them and pass them. And we're going to do that uh, server side. You have to hand somebody something server side from your NPC or only you're going to see it. And we want everybody to see it, right? So on replicated storage, since we're going to be going from client to server and stuff like that, let's hit this plus sign. And then we're going to do a remote event, right? You could do RE, and then you have a subsetted list, remote event. And I'm going to call this the lemon event, right? So we're going to need that going, ooh, uh, put lemon RE. We don't want the same name, especially since we're going to be cloning the lemon itself. Lemon RE. Now, to answer the questions that the NPC asks right here, 
it would be ideal if we could put the scripts right in here, but I get funny results from that sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to starter player, open that up, and I'm going to put the scripts to deal with the NPCs, with the dialogues in starter character scripts, right? And you could actually have it in either one of these, but the code's going to be slightly different. So let's do starter character scripts, hit the plus, we'll add a local script, and we could call this like uh, dialogue, uh, dialogue chat or something like that. I think I'm just going to call it like lemon loke for my lemon local script because I'm not going to have a lot of dialogues in this. In here, I am going to get a reference to my lemon vendor. All right, so we say local, how about lemon vendor equals workspace, and then you go ahead and find the guy, right? What do we call him? Lemon vendor. There he is. And then let's get the dialogue on him. So we'll say local, how about lemon, oh man, lemon dialogue, right? He's going to be on the lemon vendor. You could do a wait for child, but that's server side stuff. Your client, uh, it's probably all going to be there. Maybe we'll do it anyway. Oh, uh, let's do head. It's on the head, right? And then we can just do dialogue. I don't think we need a wait for child. I don't think we'll have any trouble at all with that. All right, what else do I need? We do have replicated storage. We're going to need replicated storage, I should say. So I'll make a variable for RS called RS for replicated storage, game colon get service, replicated storage, straight. And so we get our remote event. We will need it eventually. We can call that lemon RE. I might not hook it up right now, right at this minute. So we'll do replicated storage, wait for child lemon RE. And now we're gonna need the lemon itself, right? Lemon. Replicated storage, wait for child, lemon, right? So, so that's the actual lemon object, the thing you can hold. That's the remote event it's going to be talking to the server. All right, now how do we capture that dialogue choice? Let's do that. Let's do, how about lemon dialogue, right? And when you click on a choice from the dialogue, you're going to get dialogue choice selected. We will connect to a function, we'll say, player and choice, right? So this is the player that clicked on the dialogue choice and this is the choice they made. Let's just do a quick print out and then run it and see if we got any errors. So let's do print and I'll say uh, loc script. Let's do a colon and then let's get the player. And then we'll see the choice. That's going to be important, right? We want to know what choice someone selected. Choice dot. And this is going to be, how about user dialogue? We want to get the actual dialogue choice so we know what to do. Now, this right here is, if we go up to, here's our dialogue under the head of the lemon vendor. If you click this choice here, this user dialogue that says yes is what's going to be printed out right here. We're going to need to know that for our if statement. It's not the name of the choice here. So if you look down at the second one, that one is no with an exclamation mark. Let's try it out, see what we got. I'm going to go back and select this script so you don't get confused if you're looking. Uh, if you're looking on the video and you see me selecting that. Let's hit the play. All right, here's our guy. We're going to hit our view and then output window. We're going to run up here. Do you want 11? Yes. There it is. Choice is yes. Cool. And now we're going to ask for the second one, right? I wish I could make those things go away a little quicker. Let's click it. Do you want a lemon? Let's hit no. So it should be no exclamation. Nice. And then there's the player, right? We wrote the player in there. Player name. Okay, cool. Let's turn this off. We'll go back to our lemon loc. I'm going to shut this output window so I have a little more room. And then we'll continue programming. So I'm only going to handle the condition where the user selects a yes. Like you, you could add to this. You can see how it's done, right? So if choice dot user dialog equals equals yes, then let's print that out. Like uh, give the player 
uh, lemon. I'm just doing this for troubleshooting, right? Exclamation. All right, and then we're going to get the lemon re colon fire server. I don't want to give the lemon on local on the local script because you'll see it in Roblox Studio, but other people won't see it who's playing the game. You want to give them the lemon server side, right? So let's do that. That's why we have the remote event. Let's go ahead. And I think I'm going to copy these two lines of code to cheat a little bit and put that in my server side code. So I'll do a control C, right? And then I'm going to go over to my server script service, hit the plus, hit script, right? Not local script, script. It's a server script, right? It's running under server script service. And then I could do like, how about lemon manager or, you know, dialogue manager, whatever you want, game manager, right? Just to get a... Just get a solution that works well for you. Instead of this print statement, do a control V, I'm going to paste those two. Ah, oh, look at that. We got replicated storage and we got the remote RE. Oh, you know what? We actually need the lemon too. I should have gotten all three lines. But that's all right. I'll just do it in here. So the lemon itself, replicated storage, wait for child, lemon. Essentially what we want to do now is get that lemon RE and we're going to catch that event on server event, right? When it fires, we're going to connect that to an anonymous function. The player is going to get passed in the player that fired the event. We didn't pass any arguments because we only have one thing. So we're going to assume it's a lemon. Let's do local, my lemon, my lemon. We're going to get the lemon that we got out of replicated storage and we're going to clone it because we want many of them, right? We, want to, we might want to give out a lot of lemons. So we don't want to use the original. All right, so then we'll get my lemon dot parent equals player. Just stick it in his backpack. Backpack. All right, let's try it. We'll go to play. And there's a little guy there. Let's look at the output window. So view. There's an output window. Hit the question mark. Yes. Oh, look at that. Got a lemon. Sweet. All right, that's pretty cool, right? And, and I didn't get any errors. And then of course, if you hit no, nothing's gonna happen. Let's just quick try it on the player to make sure, uh, what do you call it, the test, the test server to make sure that the other person playing can actually see the lemon. So you should always test things on both studio and then do the test server and then do it actually in the Roblox player. I have two players selected. I'm going to hit start. I won't bother pausing the video because on my new computer, it starts up pretty quickly. And probably could be a little bit quicker. Sweet. All right. So now we have two players. Let's take a look. This guy's going to look over here. He wants to see the lemon. Here. Yes. He's got a lemon. There it is. Oh, and this guy, he can see it too. There it is. Can he get a lemon? I bet he can. Yes. Now nah, he's got a lemon, right? That's pretty cool. All right, good luck with that. I will see you in the next video.